This is what I did originally for the Heroes one a few years ago. I don't know, remember what year now, but uh, so when I was first planning that out, it was this rough sketch, and that was what solidified for me a big grouping. Like if I had to limit all the heroes to one finite number of characters, this is what I would do. And then it expanded from here. But this basic configuration, the way the characters are standing mixed amongst each other, would stay the same. So having that in hand, I then do a sketch pretty much following the same size, you know, proportions of this one, but do it the villains and figuring out this block of them right there. If I feel satisfied with that, then I, I can flesh out the rest, you know, which is add more to this side, more to that side, figure out the proportions of the grouping as compared villains to heroes and think about how much space there's going to be to fill. So, um, and that led to a total of 37 characters. And including even at the top here, the little faint indication of Galactus's eyes, which will be a painting at a separate size and proportion where that'll get blown up by the designer and sort of laid in behind the figures as kind of a ghostly presence because he's so large, you figure he shouldn't, he shouldn't be proportionally shrunk down and put into the group. You know, I want everybody to be the size they're supposed to be. And, and that meant also I had to kind of research, well, how tall are some of these guys? And I mostly got it right. A few of them are off. In a, a few cases, I've made characters taller than they're known for being. But sometimes those specs on how they're listed in terms of size, they fluctuate so much that, like, you know, there is no perfect law for what a character has to be. Um, because over time, you realize people have affected it with their preconceptions, like what they feel a character is as opposed to what it really is. Like, say, Wolverine's a great example of that. He's always been defined as small, like the actual animal he's named for. The problem is people love him so much, they never draw him as a man who's five foot three. But that's how big he's supposed to be. Five foot three is Danny DeVito. That's a small guy. So your impression of Wolverine, were he cast with a human being that was the right scale, would not be what you think he should be because of the way that his artistic presence has been for the last 50 years. And that's what makes it kind of weird is that the reality of what he's supposed to be versus say the, uh, the feeling people have towards him. You know, so that's why feeling kind of comes into even the way I approach the stuff here. It's got to sort of react to my own gut instinct and that matters more than whatever the specific uh, kind of instructions are dictating. So like that rough sketch there, that's just going from memory. That's not sitting there and checking each costume or whatever. That was me knocking it through in like another, I don't know, maybe I worked on that for a couple hours, maybe less. And so, I don't remember how much time it was. It was just to kind of get a feeling of confidence about it, like a sense of like, oh yeah, there's a lot of characters here I'd like to draw. This will look nice. You know, making decisions like, okay, how many villains are gonna be female in this? Because you'll wind up saying, oh, I don't really have very good diversity in the scale of who gets to make the cut. Because it's not about, including for the sake of who needs to be represented. It's about who makes the cut from being important, from being like a major thing. Like, you know, there's plenty of characters of all different backgrounds, but you want to include the creme de la creme, the, mo the most iconic ones. And ironically, the majority of the women characters that make their way into the piece are kind of villain-ish but more sort of on the level of being anti-heroes rather than being full board villain villains. Like Elektra, you, don't, you realize like she's a complicated character, but she's not like knocking over Bank Vault. She just has a very liberal idea of about killing. Um, you know, Black Cat robs people, but she's mostly on the side of the angels. And, you know, um, Mystique, She's been an assassin, so you would think having killed a lot of people would be enough of a thing, but she's generally considered on the good guy's side these days. So just about every woman that's in the piece has kind of seemed to have been 
a sort of reformed villain status. So villain as being a subjective kind of point of view. Hella would be more the extreme of where you can go with vibrancy of character design and color because she's something more abstract in the approach where, you know, she's got vibrant green on top of black and the full-on Kirby kind of, he only expected to have to draw her once or twice kind of shots where everybody that's had to draw her over the last 50 years has had to embellish on how do you draw that costume, that complicated outfit for multiple shots, multiple times, and you know, different artists over time have tried to simplify her look because it's overly busy and ornate. And because I can take whatever amount of time it is to make a single painting, I try and follow every bit of detail that was there indicated by Jack Kirby's first drawings. And he himself only drew a few shots of her from when she first appeared. She didn't have that many establishing shots. And definitely a fascinating character in that I always found her design to be appealing and, and intriguing. And honestly, to be fair to the villain's piece, she's like included in, as a villain in theory, but in practicality, she's not a villain. She was sort of uh, something you had to worry about because if she's there, that means somebody's dead or maybe she's come, come a-calling to pick somebody up because she lords over the land of the dead for the, uh, the Norse men or the, as guardians. And so uh, I didn't know from memory that she was supposed to be extraordinarily tall. I read up on her bio and saw what they listed her as, which was, God, something like six foot eight or seven feet tall. Like, what? Hella? And then I pulled out the old comics and saw when Jack Kirby established her, Thor gets up and stands in front of her and he's tiny in comparison to this woman. Like, oh, shit, he really established that she's tall. Like, tall, tall. So, you know, I could really embrace that in the painting. I could really go to town with how well I could make her have this physical grandiosity. The, the approach to the Red Skull, you have to kind of work in the, the history of where he comes from is that he wasn't the leader of Hydra back in the 1940s when he was first created. He was a Nazi and he used to have a swastika right there on his chest and that would continue all the way up until his revival in the 1960s and even up until, geez, honestly, within the last 20 years. Basically, it started to come through that they didn't want to have Nazi imagery on the, co on the front of major characters in comics Particularly for Marvel, this became a no-no that was installed at some point, I think, in the 1990s. But there's lots of imagery that's been created by different people where they recall his classic appearance. And we, we do know, for a rule, into Germany, you can't actually distribute imagery with the swastika. It's against the law. Now... I don't know that it affects the interior of projects, but it's for the cover of things. Like, you couldn't have it on a movie poster, you couldn't have it on the front of a book. So if it's inside of a book, they wouldn't stop that, but they wouldn't feature something showcasing the swastika. So he's subsequently, over the years, had that swastika removed off of the front of his clothing. And he's had any number of different bits of clothing he's wore the year, over the years, but mainly he was that red mask, which was oversized originally before they decided to make it his actual face. Um, it was this big, bulky, abstract kind of exaggerated skull mask and then a deep, deep green bodysuit of no great adornment, so he didn't really have anything that was true, too dramatic looking at least initially, and that's changed now where, you know, there's different versions of over the years where you've got his red skull head added on top of much cooler looking outfits or, you know, distinctive kind of military uniforms, much of them, again, like German military from the 40s.